we really have to try to attack the issue for the root of the problem and really understand what an insider threat means. So along those lines, the core feature of an insider threat is betrayal. These are individuals who betray their positions of trust and use their positions and legitimate access for illegitimate means. Along that line, the key factor is that it's purposeful. There's been talk amongst the community about an accidental insider. Um, there's certainly utility in trying to uh, create defense mechanisms against accidental insiders, what we kind of dub as the knucklehead problem. These are individuals who uh, accidentally mishandle information or unwittingly cause some damage to the organization. Um, that's a fundamentally different problem than someone who is purposefully and with malice enacting some harm against your organization. So for the purpose of this presentation and how I think the insider threat problem should be defined, it's about really looking for that specific uh, intent and malice. Though the insider threat issue has garnered a lot more support and a lot more uh, noteworthy news in recent years because of some of the high profile cases, it's one of the least voluminous problems that can have some of the highest impacts. Insider threats can not only compromise sensitive government information that can have long-standing effects for our government, our economy, um, our international operations. They can also cause damage to the government and industry in the, the numbers of billions of dollars, which I don't really think anybody has that money to spare. Um, the other key factor of the insider threat problem is that we really can't focus, again, on specific, isolated situations. It's not about someone who's a spy or someone who prints a lot of data or injects malcode into a system. It has numerous types of manifestations, both in terms of the actual malicious behavior, but then in the, in the way that those behaviors are enacted. At the insider threat problem, as you can see, it can span from IT sabotage to fraud to workplace violence to unauthorized disclosure. And the manifestations of that hundreds and thousands of different ways that a person can do that. So if we solely focus on how a person is doing it without taking it back to the root of the problem, we're really not going to get anywhere. That's why I think it's so important to really focus on what the heart of the issue is. And in terms of how it happens, most people don't come into an organization with the intent to become a malicious actor. Um, there are certainly people that can. Uh, hopefully, those individuals can be mitigated at the forefront from secure hiring protocols and background investigations. But most malicious insiders start out just like everyone else. They evolve into malicious actors over time as a result of opportunities, triggered risk factors, and peak motivations. These red flags are what we call indicators. And all employees in every organization have some of these red flags or indicators, and they exist at varying levels across this continuum. It's about identifying what indicators to what degree might cause someone to get to this point, the tipping point. Basically, what makes them go over to the dark side. And that's what makes it a challenging problem because these risk factors exist all the time, always for everyone. But what is it that makes it for one person kind of push them over the edge? The biggest thing that I want to stress today, again, is that this is not a typical cybersecurity problem. Insider threat, by its sheer definition, goes against all traditional means of cybersecurity, information assurance, and data protection, where we protect our systems, our networks, and our information from intruders and unauthorized activity. These are people who are within your organization and have the legitimate access to do the things that they're doing. You're not locking your doors or setting up an alarm system to prevent a burglar from coming into your house. You're opening the door, you're shaking the guy's hand, you're inviting him in for a beer, and then you're giving him the keys to your house while you go on vacation. The fundamental difference between an insider threat and a typical hacker is that we trust our threats. We trust them with the most sensitive and proprietary information that our organizations hold. And we trust that they won't betray that. But as we all know, and probably why you all are here, they do. The other key factor is that it's not a sole technical problem. Insider threats can range any spectrum of demographics, technical skill, and subject matter expertise. So if you solely apply a technical response, you're really not grasping the extent of the issue. 
There are certainly insider threats that do have significant technical backgrounds that use those technical backgrounds to penetrate and infiltrate the systems and enact harm, steal information, but that's only one component. There's a whole another sphere of different ways that these, these behaviors are manifested.